Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Ash Exantis, better known as Ash Cash, with us today. And what we're going to be talking about is actually how to build the brand of your business through publishing. Uh, Because Ash has a very unique background. He spent about 15 years in banking, but where he's really gone on to right now is more in the financial education and marketing realm. And what he really specializes in is using the power of publishing books to build a person's brand. Uh, Ash, uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Hey, thank you so much, Doug. Uh, Ash Exantis, uh, a.k.a. Ash Cash, a 15-year banking executive, you know, like Doug mentioned, where, you know, I've done everything from teller to personal banker, private banker, uh, branch manager. I was one of the youngest CEOs of a federally chartered bank at one one, one particular time. Um, and when I made the transition uh, from banking to uh, teaching financial education, I realized the power of books, the power of publishing, uh, and it, it, it actually allowed me uh, to grow my business exponentially. Uh, I've created at least 15 streams of income from my book, um, and, it's, and it's one of the, the, the best ways uh, that you can actually get attention towards your business um, without having to, to, to pay the expensive, uh, you know, advertising fees that a lot of people, you know, agencies may charge. Um, yeah. And so my, my goal is to teach, you know, teach founders and executives, you know, how to do the same thing. All right. Well, let's uh, so let, let's just dive right in and, uh, you know, and just go straight to a couple of the thorny points on books. Number one, they're really hard. They take a lot of time to write and edit. And number two is that uh, if if you don't have some kind of back end business that your that your book is can help monetize, you can't shouldn't plan on making anything from the actual book sales itself because I think that's probably the number one uh, thing that a lot of people or misconception a lot of people have is they think oh if I if I write a book that sells a whole bunch of copies I'll make a bunch of money not directly from the book. Don't plan on making anything from the book because if in order to sell a bunch of copies, you're going to have to reinvest a lot of what you would make in royalties into marketing for that book. But that's just fine because the real model is to get you know, is to develop thought leadership and uh, to put content out there so people will view you as an expert. So instead of needing to compete on price, you can get people to come to you, at which point the price is basically whatever you say it is. Um, t- you know, t- tell me if I'm missing anything here. That, that's at yeah, least that, I understand it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's spot on. So, but, so, but, but a couple of things, though. I think that um, technology, though, has made it easier to write a book, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so books, books actually, so I, don't, I haven't written, physically written a book in years. Uh, I actually dictate my books. And it makes it easier for thought leaders to be able to uh, get their book out, right? Because, I'm, you know, thought leaders shouldn't be writers. Right. Thought leaders are thought leaders. And so, you know, you know, I've created a system where you can literally um, outline, you know, your uh, talk or your thought leadership. um, And then there's an app called Otter, O-T-T-E-R, where you can literally talk into the app um, and teach what you would normally write inside the book, which makes it easier. Um, And then after you have done that, um, you can actually delegate the rest of it. Right. You can hire someone to edit it. You can hire maybe a ghostwriter to add in some other pieces on it. So it really doesn't take um, that long um, to, you know, get a book out. In fact, uh, you know, I've been able to do it in two weeks or less, uh, and I've helped clients do do that the same. But um, I do agree 100% uh, with, you know, you know, people are focused on a lot of times making a lot of money from those books, but the book should be a, a pathway uh, into your, your, your product or service. Um, you know, a great example of that was Gary Keller, right? Yeah. So people, people, people don't realize that, you know, he had, you know, Keller Williams, which is the, uh, you know, real estate agency, but, but it, it wasn't until he wrote his book that he became a thought leader and through that that thought leadership in his book, it grew Keller Williams as you know one of the number one you know real estate yeah. agencies in the world um, because he used the power of books. Uh, think about Stephen Covey. Think uh, you know you, you know seven habits of highly effective people. Right, his business yeah. model was the Franklin Covey you know you know uh, company, but through seven habits of highly effective people, it kind of you know helped you know exponentially grow. Um, you know, his business. And even to this day, you know, uh, Stephen Covey passed away in 2012. To this yeah. day, that book is still a number one bestseller. Wow. Is it really 10 years ago? Man. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, man, time's gone by. Um, and okay. So one of the other things I'd love to get your thoughts on is because, you know, a number of people who are, who are uh, listening to this podcast probably have either 
thought about writing a book, would almost certainly love to write a book. They might have one out. Um, but the question is getting it published because you, know, you can self-publish through someone like Amazon pretty easily, but then getting it distributed is kind of tricky. Uh, whereas on the other hand, if you don't already have a book, you have a publishing track record, the chance that somebody like Wiley or any of the other, uh, any of the other pu big publishing houses are going to, going to actually listen to you is zero. You know, nobody's going to pay attention to you unless you already have that track record. So how, I mean, because I would assume that a commercially published book is going to give you a lot more market power than a self-published book. But in, in, in your, in your experience, is there some kind of, is there a hack or is there a, a best practice for how to kind of get over that, uh, you know, kind of cross that divide? Yes, 100%, Doug. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, so I've, I've, my first book came out in 2009, uh, and technically I'm a self-published author, uh, but I've, I've been on every media platform you could think of. I've been on Wall Street Journal, New York yeah. Times, American Banker, MSNBC, CNBC. So anything you've thought of, if you Google me, you'll see I've been on all of it, but I've never been published by any of the big guys. The reason for that um, is because you have to be strategic on how you self-publish your book, right? Um, and so, you know, my name is Ash Cash. My company is My Right Money Management. I could have easily created a publishing company called Ash Cash Books, or I could have called it My Right Books, but that's too connected to me. And so when people, you know, PRs and producers look and they say, oh, this book came out by Ash Cash and it's available on Ash Cash Books, they're going to know that I self-published it. And so, I would suggest that anybody who is looking to self-publish, uh, publish it under a name that's not connected with your business. Um, and so the name of my publishing company is called One Brick Publishing. Um, and, and, and ironically, I got the name through a story I heard Will Smith tell about you know him, him you know breaking down a wall and his father telling him to build back the wall um, and do it one brick at a time. And I was like, oh, if I'm going to build a publishing company, I'm going to do it one brick at a, at a time. And so I called it One Brick Publishing. Um, and that's step number one right? Create a publishing company that's separate. You have to buy your own ISBN number. If you're going to publish through Amazon and you use Amazon's ISBN number, then everyone's going to know that it's a self-published book. But if you, if you buy your ISBN number from Bowker, which is the only company that sells ISBN numbers, that's how you're able to register your publishing company and no one knows that it's, it's self-published. That's number two. Number three Amazon only published on Amazon for Amazon.com, but there is another company called Ingram. Ingram Sparks, right? Ingram is one of the largest distributors uh, in the country, um, and Ingram Sparks is their self-publishing division. If okay. you publish your book on Ingram Sparks, Ingram Sparks distributes to Barnes and Nobles, to Wal a Walmart, to Target, to thousands of independent bookstores, right? And so now when you self-publish your book, you get you get your ISBN number from Bowker, right? And then you put it on Amazon. You put it on Ingram Sparks. Now your book is available on Amazon, Walmart, Target, thousands of independent bookstores. And so now when you start to, uh, you know, if you hire a publicist and you start to make your rounds to, to announce the book, uh, uh, producers are not going to be able to tell the difference whether it's Simon and Schuster or Wiley, uh, you know, because you you you've done it in the in, in the right way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it's, I was going to say, I'm actually going to be uh, going to slide into a little bit of, uh, of self-promotion for you. Do you have any of this like in a document or ebook or something like that? Um, you know, of course, I normally do the call to action at the end, but I would actually love to get the link to that. So people who are listening um, can, uh, you know, can be able to access those resources. Um, you know, yeah, I can do that. Otherwise, I'll have to rewind and keep listening to the same segment to make sure they write down the information. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. So I, I, I do have a program called the six figure author blueprint that teaches everything uh that that i've just talked about um and that's available at six figure author uh blueprint.com so it's the number six uh okay. six figure author blueprint.com gotcha gotcha all right well uh, we've gone through some of the mechanics um so tell, tell me a little bit about you know kind of how you go about you know you've gotten say you've gotten your your book dictated you have it edited you have it ready you're publishing it and now you're looking to promote it. What, what have you seen as the best practice for how to do that effectively? Yeah, that's a great question, Doug. So I think, you know, no, number one, 
um, is, is really uh, making sure that you're writing a book that other people want, right? That is solving a problem mm-hmm. that people have first and foremost, because um, the biggest mistake a lot of authors make, and especially thought leaders, um, is that they, they have the solution that they know that's going to work, but, but, they're, but they're not uh, addressing that solution based on their audience, right? And so really tap into your audience and make sure it's a problem that they believe that they have and you have the solution to it. So that way the book, the book could sell, right? But then number two, um, I say that you should buy or borrow traffic, right? And what does that mean? Um, that means that, you know, once you have identified your target market and you know who that audience is, then you can, you know, it's, it's time to borrow traffic first and foremost. Um, you can do that through television interviews, radio yeah. interviews, um, you know, help, help a reporter out is a great website where reporters are actually looking uh, for, for sources for their, for their articles. Um, you have YouTube shows, you have podcasts, right? Yeah. Uh, where, where people who already have your audience, uh, you can now tap into that audience and give them the information. And that way you're borrowing traffic from, from those people. Um, then you can buy traffic, right? And, and buying traffic uh, is your traditional ways. You can do, you know, Facebook ads, you can do Instagram ads, yeah. YouTube ads, Google ads. Um, you know, I like to test them out first. Um, and, and what I do is, uh, you know, I put them out on my social media first because I know that my, my, my audience, um, you know, my ideal audience is already following me on different social media platforms. So I put out different uh, ads or organic posts too. So it don't even have to be something well-produced. It could be, you know, you pick up your phone and you can just be authentic because a, a lot of, yeah. you know, audience loves the authenticity. Um, and then, and then once you see it performs well, based on your following, you can now boost it. You can now, you know, put some ads behind it. Uh, but here's another, you know, uh, best kept secret as well, uh, is that there are a lot of influencers that you can actually pay um, to post for you, to give you a shout out. Uh, and so it's, it's worked very well for me on Instagram where I'll find, uh, you know, you know, pages that have a large uh, following, uh, you know, they have my, yeah. my specific demographic uh, and then I'll pay them to shout me out. They'll say, Hey, shout out to Ash Cash. You know, he just wrote this new book from the block to the bank. Check it out. It'll help you, you know, maximize your circumstances because what, you know, people, uh, they, they expect me to talk good about me, but it's better when Doug is promoting me. It's better when someone else on a, on a social media platform is promoting you. And so that's, that's what I would say you could buy, you know, you should buy and borrow traffic. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and, uh, and now do you normally, uh, and sorry, I'm kind of getting into mechanics here, but I kind of nerd out on this stuff. Um, and so do you normally, um, you know, when, when you're trying, when you're directing traffic, do you try to direct traffic straight to your book or do you use your book as a, um, a, as a vehicle for lead capture? Uh, just because, you know, everything I've seen is that lead capture is really where the, um, you know, is, is, is it's where the proverbial gold mine is. Yeah. And so it, it, it really depends on what your um, business model is. Right. And so uh, if you're offering um, a low ticket item, yeah. um, then 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 that traffic would lead to something free. Um, and so I have a, um, you know, a continuity program. I have a, a something called the abundance community. That's you know, that's what the AC is, stands for. Yeah. Besides Ash Cash you know, it stands for the abundance community. And so my community uh, is, a you know, it's a, it's a monthly $47 a month. Right. Yeah. And so in order to, to, to drive traffic to that, I'll give them something for free first. Uh, and then, you know, once, once they're, they're, they're in my, uh, you know, you know, my lead capture, my email, then, then we start yeah. talking to them about joining that. Uh, but my books are leading to a higher ticket item. Sure. Um, and so, I, and so, you, you know, I, I want to uh, come out the gate and charge for the book uh, because, um, you know, when I when I'm when I'm trying to get people to uh, purchase a higher ticket item, you know, I want to weed out all the people who are, are just want free information. Yeah. Right. Because if you if you if you look at the statistics uh, out of all of the open access courses out there, the millions of access, yeah. open access courses, only six point eight percent of those are ever finished. Right. So people pay people who pay, pay attention. Um, and so and so what my focus is and I, and I would suggest that to any thought leaders um, is that you want to be able to, um, you know, charge 
whether it's, you know, going straight to Amazon and charging, but you don't capture those, those people's emails. Um, and so when you put out a book, it's good to have the book available on Amazon, Walmart, Target, all these different places, but you also want to have the book available in your, uh, like you want to create a funnel for your book. So that way, when someone hears you, they're going to buy the book from you. And when they buy the book from you, now you have their email address. Now you're able to retarget them. But then also, yeah. even while they're buying the book, you can upsell them and, and, and tell them about your other products and services. And you have a better chance of closing that deal with them because if they see the value in what you're upselling, they'll be able to take advantage of it. And you know they're a paying customer because they were willing you know, to pay for that book. Yeah. And, and I think that uh, I'd like to expand on what you're talking about a little bit there, because in, I think at first blush, it can sound like it's a, um, what, what am I, uh, what, what am, how am I thinking about this here? You know, kind of at, you know, when you first hear that, you know, it can kind of sound like it's a, uh, you know, a revenue optimizing online marketing type of thing. Uh, but I actually had a little bit of an epiphany uh, a little while ago. Uh, and because I think there was uh, one one thing you already mentioned, which is that people who pay pay attention, you know. Because I'd always thought, okay, well, you know, why do all these why why do all these experts make you pay for stuff? Well, okay, the reason is you know, is because okay, so, you know, if if I go to if I go sign up for something, say some kind of you know monthly membership, whatever, and it's free, um, you know, I you know there's about a five percent chance that I'll get full value out of it. On the other hand, if I'm paying for it, especially if I'm paying enough for it to sting just a little bit, mm, then then I'll be saying, okay, I need to make sure that I am getting my value out of this. And so I think that's actually a really important reason from both a producer side and from a consumer side to pay for things because that is how you get that full value. And I think there's there's an, another level too, because like you're talking about moving people up your value ladder, right? To higher value, higher cost items. Well, and that is, you know, especially as a, you know, as both a, well, principally as a producer, but also thinking about it from a consumer perspective. Okay, so, you know, if the message that you are taking out to the market is, if you really, really believe in it, you know, if you've really put your heart into it, and if it really does generate net value at a high multiple of whatever you're charging, that in my view, you have a moral duty to get that offer out to as many people as you possibly can. And that puts a different spin on it because, you know, in in that case, then, you know, it's not about, okay, well, I need to get as many people in the funnel as, as I can so that I can extract as many dollars as humanly possible. You know, it's that I need to get as much value out to the market as I can. And I, you have to start escalating the amount that people pay for that because otherwise they won't convert it. You, you can take the most high value thing that's ever been, ever been created. If you put it out for free, less than 5% of people will get the value from it. They ha- you have to pay in order Absolutely. to pay attention enough to really get full value out of just about any program. And that was something that it took me a long time to wrap my head around because, you know, there was a long time where I just kind of felt like, okay, you know, all the, you know, all these gurus out there are just trying to fleece people out of their money. Well, maybe some are, but, 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 but if you don't pay, if you, if you don't feel that sting that yes. motivates you to take action on something, then you will never ever get the full value from anything. Yeah, and and, and let me add something else to that, Doug. Um, You also miss out on being able to have other people talk about your success, right? And so if you as a producer and any producers who are listening, you know, if you as a producer uh, charge, and I just gave you the stat, 6.8% of people uh, complete, you know, stuff, you know, you know, courses, right? And so if you as a producer, um, you know, have it cheap or free or low cost and it doesn't sting enough for people to actually, um, you know, you know, complete it, then you don't have testimonials. You don't have yeah. people to say, you know what, I've been through, you know, Ash Cash's program and it really works. Oh, I, yo, you know, Doug had this program. I took the program and it really works. And so you don't have enough testimonials. And so therefore you're not going to effectively impact the people you want to impact with your solution. If yeah. I'm saying that 
you can you can make a lot of money, uh, you know, exponentially and get your yeah. business out there by writing a book. But I don't have anybody who says they went through my program because no one's completing it. Then it's then it's not it's not going to be valuable. Yeah. And so producers have to know that you know you know when, when people pay, they pay attention and. It it, it, it it actually allows you to not have to, you know, sell, right? You don't have to sell once you have receipts. Once you know, once you have success stories and you say, look, so forget forget that I was able to do it. I had this person, that person, and this person who is now my walking testimonial. Uh, and then that increases the, the, you know, the impact that you have, uh, you know, all across the board. Yeah. Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. All right. Well, uh, let's see. So uh, uh, we're getting close on time, but give people a uh, last couple of thoughts to uh, to cap off with. And then, of course, let everybody know your website. Yeah. So my, my, my last thought is that everybody uh, should should be an author. Uh, if you have any products or services out there, uh, you know, books are about legacy. Right. Books are the one thing that allow you to live forever. Right. Yeah. And like we we know we, we, we know, you know, you know, when, when we were born, uh, you know, I don't care who you are, which ethnicity is, what you believe in. Everybody's going to die, right? But yeah. when you die, what is that thing that's going to stay here forever? How are you going to allow your philosophy, philosophy to live forever and ever? And you do that through a book. Um, and so I would, I would you know, suggest everybody, you know, you know re-listen to this, uh, really understand how uh, to get to that next level. Uh, to write your book and to write an effective book. Um, you get, if you want to learn more about me, my website uh, is IamAshCash.com. Uh, you know, I'm on all social media platforms at IamAshCash. Um, and you can also take advantage of the Six Figure Author Blueprint uh, by going to SixFigureAuthorBlueprint.com. Got it. Got it. Okay. So I am AshCash.com, SixFigureAuthorBlueprint.com. Ash, it was great to talk to you today. Thank you. Likewise, Doug. Thank you so much for having me. All right, everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.